All right, everybody. <clears throat> this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. I've been hoping that I would get to make this video. Now, uh, you might recognize this book. There's a little section right here called Jirasu Jippo, or Garasu. I'm, I'm not positive. I'm horrible at pronunciations. I'm shaking, my voice is quivering, I'd like you to take me seriously, just this once, I'm not going to tell any jokes or anything today, I've made sure no cat hair will be in frame. This is a serious thing. This third chapter on the subject of Jurassic Jippo, or enameled glass, is the shortest in this guide. The only thing scarcer than examples of this wear is documentation of the technique used to create them. During my nearly 30 years of collecting, it's been longer since then and I've spoken to this man and he still hasn't encountered any more of this, I have neither encountered nor had an opportunity to acquire a piece of standard cloisonne on a glass body. Uh, he's referring to actual wire work inside glass, uh, which is a bit different than what we're looking at. According to Coben and Furster, uh, examples of glass cloisonne are only rarely seen today. Um, I'm going to skip all the attribution. Uh, the only two examples I have found have been in the form of enamel painted on a glass base or body and are depicted below. They are both believed to be Shinjipo or modern Shippoyaki. Both examples exhibit excellent workmanship and quality and were acquired directly from dealers in Japan. There's one. Oh, I am just shaking like a leaf. Goodness. And here's another one. A vase with ovoid body and short neck, the cobalt dark blue glass body decorated with a multitude of golden yellow flowers, having blue and red highlights, the background with a gold splash throughout, the base with a plain border, the bottom finished with a polished pontal, unmarked <clears throat> height is seven and a half inches. Oh, all sorts of other measurements. The cobalt blue body provides a very bold and striking background against the bright golden yellow enameled flower heads. This is a book on Japanese enamels by Gary Yoshino. And that, that is a glass vase from Japan decorated with enamel. Okay, uh, enamel decoration. It was difficult. That's why cloisonne exists, because you can't put a liquid on any sort of form and have it stay where you put it. So in the beginning, they started putting cloisons in there, which are little uh, partitions, cells, uh, to hold the enamel so that they could then work it. Now, as time progressed, they developed... Um, better enamels that would hold the surface better. Um, that's how wireless cloisonne came about. Uh, and apparently that's how this came about. But there were so many other techniques to make this thing. You could have you could have rolled up glass and cut off little buds at a time off of the roll so that you could just stick them to that glass base and refire it. Instead this gentleman chose to Decorate it with enamel with no, you know, cells or anything. Now, I want you to see that there's a... I'm trying to be so careful. As you can see, there's a bit of a golden border around each one of these flowers. <clears throat> and I've considered the possibility that maybe that was somehow painted on first, and then that almost acted like a cloison as you can see the enamel now there's so many reasons this was difficult and you see how many flowers there must be on this base I mean there must be at least 50 so um, enamel changes colors as you bake it uh, it has to be baked the exact right amount of time to create the color that you want because it's not you know it wasn't yellow as he laid this down he had to experiment he had to figure out, uh, you know, what color it was going to turn to. So as time progressed, he figured out how to get it to stick to glass. He figured out what colors he would need to start with to end up with these colors. This is almost a half inch thick 
cobalt blue glass. Um, it's decorated with silver splashes all over it right here. And then it's got tons of these lovely flower decorations. My voice is quivering. I, I sincerely apologize. I'm trying to uh, keep this straight here. And is that not genuinely one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen? And it's so well crafted. We're going to very gently allow you to look at the bottom here. Do you see how thick that glass is? I mean, that's a whole... <laughs> look at that. This thing's so heavy. <clears throat> I'm going to very, very carefully hold a flashlight over it so we can look at it from kind of the inside. Do you see that? What a fantastic thing that is. Get all sorts of light on them. How about that? Goodness gravy. Oh. I know we're getting a little bit of glare there, but is that not one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen? If you like your steak rare, well, you probably like this vase, because uh, an author, a guy who collects stuff from Japan and all over the country, um, I'm sure all over the world, you know, he, he took... Uh, 40 years of experience to, or 30 years of experience to write this book about Japanese enamels. And it's been longer than that since then, and I've spoken to him since then, and he assures me that these are still the two pieces that he's found in that time span. And, uh, yeah, he told me he was keeping one, and, and he was selling this one. And look at what we did. Who's into this? Like, comment, subscribe, share. One of the rarest things you're going to see on the internet today. Guaranteed. This is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel.